Hey everyone, how is it going? So, someone the other day asked if I could cover the Sicilian. And yes, yes I can. So, Roshan Thapa, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, this one's for you. If there's anything that anyone else would like to see, by all means, just chuck it in the comments and I will happily do it. Anyway, let's just jump right in. Now, what is the Sicilian? Well, Sicilian, super popular defense from black in response to e4. And that response is c5. There we are. Now we know the Sicilian. Obviously, loads of lines and variations. First one we're going to look at is the dragon. So from this position, white is going to be wanting to just develop as normal and to try and control this d4 square here. So normally they will do that with the horsey and just bring it out to here on the f3. And we have a bit of a choice. We can either push with the e6 or the d6. d6 is most common, but just because it's quicker, I'll show you the e6 first. Well, from here, they're going to be pushing the pawn forward just to try and break open this center and get really good control. And after takes and takes, get your horsey and plop it right here on the f6. And what we're wanting is for them to push forward with that pawn. Because if they do, look at that analysis bar. So we get our queen, shimmy it right on up here to the a5, pop them in check, and if he tries to block, there we are, we've won ourselves a pawn, we're popping plenty of pressure onto this horsey here, and yeah, we're just in for a really good time. Now, much more common in the actual dragon is pushing the d6, and you can see we have this nice defense going on here, plenty of range of movement for the queen, and we've opened up the bishop. And as before, they'll push down with a pawn, do the pawn exchange, and as before, we just get our little horsey and just plunk it right here on the f6. So from here, they will continue their development with the c3, and starting the actual dragon variation is pushing the pawn to the g6, looking at getting the fianchetto, and castling off to kingside. Usually when this happens, White will be castling off queenside, and we'll have a bit of a battle of us pushing our pawns down this way, and then pushing their pawns across this way. If White brings across their bishop over here to the e3, then you know they're looking at castling off to the queenside. If they decide to bring out their bishop first, to something like e2, then you know they're more than likely going to be castling off kingside. If they come across this way, all we do, just continue developing, getting that fianchetto, they castle off, and we just keep developing, having a nice little battle over the centre here. Now, normally, they'll want to bolster up the defence, bring out the bishop at this point, and we just castle. But much more commonly, they'll just get the bishop, bring it across here, and just carry on trying to control this centre. And from here, we do the fianchetto. Don't be tempted to start pushing your horsey up, because if you do, looks like... We're going to be taking this, but all they're going to do is just get their bishop, bring it down, pop your in check, and if you try and block it, they'll take, you take, and then we are stuck in this horrible position here. So just be sure, do the fianchetto. Fair, nice and safe. Now normally, they'll be pushing this pawn and bringing it down here to the f3. Reason that they're doing this is looking at pushing their other pawns forward. And once they've done this, you know they're castling off that side. And yeah, we just castle. And we've essentially just finished off from here. We're going to be looking at finishing off development. So if they bring their queen down, looking at this. Again, just finish off your development. Bring your little horsey out. And they'll start pushing down. If they do that, just get your bishop. Plop it here on the e6. Because if he takes take with your pawn and we have opened up this bishop and we found a nice weak pawn here and this is going to be our target and again white will finish off by castling off this way and you can see they're also in a decent position as well they've got their rook and the queen on the same file doubled up looking down this way they're going to be getting their bishop out of the way so they can double up their rooks but that's not too bad because like i say we have a good target so bring your horsey up Attacking that pawn, they'll be forced to defend it, and then just slide your queen across and just start staring down this king. 
And from here we can look at moving our horsey across, trying to get the pin on, popping on the pressure. We'll be pushing our pawns forward best we can. And yeah, it's relatively even game from this point. Now the Accelerated Dragon is quite similar. We're still going to be looking at getting that little Fianchetto and Castle and off to the King's side. So they play their horsey to the F3. However, this time we're going to be getting our horsey and just plopping it right here on the C6. It'll play out quite similar. They'll push down this way and after takes, takes. We're not going to take back. We're just going to go straight for this. Normally White will just leave it and just keep the tension on here and just develop their other horsey. And yeah, we just finish off doing exactly what we were doing. Getting your bishop to there, putting plenty of pressure down this diagonal. And they'll want to try and bolster up their centre just to try and keep this guy safe. From here, he may be tempted to take... All we do is capture towards the centre. And you can see from here, we can look at getting our rook across on a really solid open file. We've got good movement for the bishop, good movement for the queen. We are controlling a lot of the centre here. And yeah, we're actually in a much better place. So like I say, they'll normally bring their bishop across. And just continue developing your little horsey out. And we are looking at castling off to the king's side. At this point, they'll probably want to take. So again, we just take back. And if they push forward with that pawn, you can always just jump out the way. It's absolutely fine. Because they'll start pushing down that way. And you just rotate your horsey around. And looking at plopping it there. Stopping this attack from coming down. And if we do get it there, we're putting quite a nice attack on this little bishop here. So they'll want to continue. Bring across their queen. And yeah, we just castle. They castle off to the queen side. And we push forward with our pawn. We're starting our big old attack. And from here, yep, we're looking at getting our queen out. Like I say, get your rook across, looking down this way. And yeah, it should be relatively even game, and it's normally quite an intense game. Really enjoy this variation. Now, the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. From this position, we're just going straight for that Fianchetto. We're not wasting any time. And as before, they push down. Takes. Takes. Bring your little horsey up. They bring theirs across. And we just go straight for the fan kettle. You can see it plays out very, very, very similar to the last one. Only difference really is we're just getting this in straight away. And as before, they'll bring out the bishop. Normally, looking at castle off to the queen's side. Continue your development. They bring out the bishop. Trying to get plenty of pressure on here. And yeah, just castle right off. And again, we're looking... Pushing forwards, like so. Trying to attack off their queen side. If they just say bring the bishop back, just push forward to be a pawn. And again, they're trying to just build up nice solid structure in the centre here. And all we're doing, getting your bishop, just plopping it here. It's absolutely fine here on the d7. And we're looking at getting the rook across to be staring down the king for when he castles. I'm going to pronounce this variation wrong, the Najorf variation. I've probably pronounced it wrong, don't correct me, it's fine, I don't care. Um, but from here, we're just pushing forward to the d6. Again, just getting this on the go. Open up the queen, open up your bishop. And as before, they push the pawn and take some takes. Again, develop your horsey, get it out here to the f6. And they develop their horsey. You can see they all play out very similar. Main difference with this compared to the dragon is we're not going to be going for the Fianchetto. Now from here, what we want to be doing is to be getting this A7 pawn and pushing it forward to the A6. Looks like a bit of a strange move and a bit of a nothing move. But what we're doing is keeping this nice and safe from these galloping horsies that are trying to get in there. Uh, also, because we're going to be pushing down our attack... This way also serves for just opening this up as part of our attack. So from here, they normally come down, just try and get the pin on. We don't worry about that, and we just push our pawn forwards. They'll carry on their attack, pushing their pawns forward, and just get your bishop, and just plonk it right here on the e7, just defending your horsey. Normally, this is where they'll get the queen, and just plant it here on the f3, looking at castling off to the queen's side. 
So from here, get your queen and pop it here on the b6. And what we're doing is we're attacking the horsey and we're attacking up here on this pawn. Just trying to put plenty of pressure on and weaken off this castle inside. I mean, all white has to do is to castle off and just continue developing with your horsey. Now, you can see there's a little bit of an issue here that your bishop isn't exactly in the most wonderful place. It's completely blocked in. This is why I'm not as huge of a fan of this variation and I much prefer the Accelerated Dragon. I really like the Fiend Kettle uh, with the Bishop just putting plenty of pressure on this side. But this is what it is. They'll start the attack. And from here just push your pawn. Block in this Bishop. Force them to take. And just take back with your Bishop. And yeah, we're not in a terrible position, but like I say, your bishop's a little bit blocked in from here. I'm not a huge fan, but it is a very, very common line. And uh, I believe it used to be the old main line. Now, for something a little bit different, they may alternatively go with the c3. And while it looks a bit of an odd move, what this is doing is allowing for d4. Getting a nice solid defense going on and really good center control. So what we want to be doing is getting the pawn and pushing forward to the d4. And when they take, normally you don't really want to be getting your queen out too early. However, in this case, it's not too bad. Because they've now blocked in their horsey. But they'll push forward with the pawn. We don't worry about that. We can just keep the tension there. It's absolutely fine. And just keep developing as normal, bringing your horsey out. Normally they'll do the same. Like I say, normally you just want to try and keep the tension as long as possible. And plus, they don't want to take, because if they do, you're just going to come across, take their queen. They have to take back with the king, and they've lost the castle an opportunity. So get your bishop, and just come across and pin him. He'll block the pin, and just push your pawn forward. Open up your bishop. From here, he's going to be castling off the king's side. It's the most logical move to make. And yeah, just continue developing. Get your horsey out. Now, normally he's going to want to get his bishop across, just helping out this little pawn here. Then, after takes, takes. Just get your bishop and just bring it here, just supporting your little horsey. He's not going to be too happy with your queen sitting there. He's moved that pawn out the way. He'll get his horsey, bring it down, and just kick you a little bit out the way. So, just bring it down one. And keeping on loads of pressure onto this king side. And from here, we're in a pretty equal position. I mean, he's probably going to try and, you know, kick your bishop out the way. And that's fine. Don't bother taking. Just bring it down here. And you can see by the analysis board, it's pretty much bang on. Completely equal position. We're, I mean, we're going to be looking at Castle and more than likely off this way. We can get our other rook across onto a nice open file there. Once we've castled off, we can get our other rook across. And yeah, like I say, we're not in a bad position. They're in a pretty good position as well. And yeah, relatively even game. I think that's probably enough for the Sicilian for one day. There's a few other lines and variations, but from there, they start getting super technical and theoretical, and it just ends up all over the place. And for the sake of this, I think if you're just starting to learn, these are the main lines that you need to be looking at and trying to remember. Personally, my favourites are the Dragon and the Accelerators, the really cool lines. Uh, if you want to know how to counter them, I do actually have another video uh, showing you how to counter the Dragon. So have a little look at that. Um, as always, thanks a lot to all of my subscribers. It's, I'm nearly at 100 in like a month. That's absolutely amazing. I'm like really, really pleased about that. And yeah, if there's anything that you want to see, just pop it down in the comment section and I'll try to cover it. But anyway, you guys go off, have some fun, and play some chess. I'll catch you later.